Many days have passed, but this bookshelf still isn't done yet. Gotta get back on it. Here's the issue. These boards were all different sizes when I got them, slightly different, and I just cut them in half. I didn't like carefully measure out exactly the right length, so they're all different lengths. This one's a little shorter than this one, and so on. And the way I fix this is I clamp them all together, make them the same length, and then I take my planer, this thing, and I plane them all smooth. I already did it to the other side, and then I flipped them around, put the bottom on a board so they're all sitting on the same board, and I'm going to plane this side smooth, all of them, all at once. And that's going to give me all the same length board uh, with the same kind of angle on the end here. This process takes a while. One thing you might notice is I'm not going all the way off. That's because the blade will grab the edge and tear. It's called tear out. So basically, I start on the side, I plane in to about there. The blade's here. I don't go off the edge. Then I turn around and do it the other way. So the blade's about here. So don't go off the edge, you won't get tear out. I got a little bit. Hmm. Oh well, just be more careful. Such a workout. And now the other way. One trick, you can set the blade a little more aggressive, but since this is pine, it ends up kind of getting a tearing, crumbly looking end grain. So when you get the boards all down the right size, you gotta loosen this thing up again and do a lighter pass to kind of make it clean looking. See this kind of poorly sawn edge? Well, this little bit of blue paint indicates that this was cut at the sawmill or wherever it was cut before I purchased it. And obviously their blade wasn't very sharp. It's kind of gave me a jaggedy edge. And the way I'm going to get around that is use this as the top. So I'm not going to see that. That'll kind of hide the problem. One thing they don't tell you is that when you buy your wood at like a Home Depot or a box store like that, you often get uh, boards that actual lumber yards rejected. So you get seconds. And that's probably what these were. And these weren't the nicest quality boards at the box store. So they were like ultra duper seconds. But the moral of the story is you want good wood with nice grain and and just overall better stuff, uh, go to a lumber yard. Don't go to a Home Depot. The good news is this is so much like working out, working my arm muscles, that this one bookshelf can make me justify never going to a gym in my life. Okay, I got this clamped up. This is the uh, side piece that was long and I glued it together and all that. And we have some overhangs because I just cut these straight across, but obviously they join an angle here. So we're going to run into a slight problem. These have to be, this has to be plain flush with this, and the back side of this has to be plain flush with this. And they're at an angle, so one way to do it is just to plane this down. But I can't just plane like this. Remember what I said before? This part will tear out. The blade will catch just the last little bit, which won't be supported on the back, and it'll tear. And this is the front, the front of the bookshelf, so I do not want that to happen. However, I'm going to be cutting at an angle. So I can cut 90 degrees, I can plane 90 degrees, I can plane back like this and go this way, but I can't go sharper and go this way, because it will cause this edge to get all gnarled up. It'll look chewed up like it was mauled by a cougar or something, and not plane smooth. So what am I going to do? How am I going to prevent this from tearing out? Well, there's one nifty trick, and it involves this chisel, which is shaded for some reason. I need to get better lighting in here. All the lights are on, and the sun is out, and the door is open, so this is as good as you're going to get. So I hold this flat against here, so I get a good register, and I'm going to push, like so, hopefully not into my wrists. I'm going to basically cut this side of all of these fibers. Hmm, I need a longer chisel. Longer chisel! So see, it's cutting into the fibers, and that's severing the fibers, basically, so that when I come back with the planer, and I'm planing this way, and it gets to these last fibers, they won't blow out the, uh, the wood under here. They will just shave off, because those fibers sitting on top on the edge aren't connected to the board. So the top fibers might fall off, but that's okay. The board underneath will not tear out. Firm it up a little more with a mallet. See? Chunk. They chunked out. I guess that chunk is unattractive, but the part that I cut down here is nice and smooth. Now back to the planer. Seriously though, one good planer, a good jack plane, does a whole bunch of work. 
Whew, that's a workout. Still got some to go. So one thing you can do is saw it as close as possible before jumping into the planer. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do with this piece here. But first, I've got to get this, uh, this little scribe line marked. Another good way to do it is use a combination square to kind of line up where you want the things to go. I know the camera angle doesn't show it very well here, but that's, that is square. Probably not gonna, oh, I just moved it. Oh no, I see it. Okay. Whew, no problem. Square, get it kind of eyeballed, and I'm just gonna sever the edge fibers like this. There. Edge fiber severed. Obviously, I'm gonna saw this off and then plane this much the same way I do this and probably plane, you know, both sides together so that they come to a nice point here because I think my scribe is like a 64th of an inch off and that's just gonna bug me. Actually, no, well, this is gonna go on carpet. The carpet's like this tall. So the carpet's gonna totally cover that up. Never mind. Hooray for covering my screw-ups. Then the top board over there is also sticking out, but it's sticking out like three feet. So I'm gonna do this same thing on there, here, and there, and be done with this part. Hooray! But you get the drift, right? Saw, plane to perfection, and done! And then sanding and gluing up and finishing and all that jazz, yeah. Okay, much planing later, and I finally got this thing all, all shaved down, the edges and stuff, but I want to show you one thing. This is that long glue joint that I did. Remember how I said you don't want to clean it up with, like, I don't know exactly what I said. You don't want to, like, wipe it up. You want to leave it kind of squirt out. I didn't use a ton of glue, so there's not a lot of it sticking out here, but generally, you want to wait, like, like a day, and then you just take a chisel... Uh, if you have a paring chisel, you can just put it down. This is a normal chisel, so I have to go bevel down. And then watch this. You can just shave away the glue joint. The glue will sit proud of the joint if the joint is flush when you glue it. So you shave it off, shave it off. You can probably use a planer for this, too. No, I actually have the right chisel that I don't have to do this, this bevel down, but you get the idea. So see, you shave it off nice and careful. And look, I, I need to do a little more cleanup, but see, there's no glue. If you do the, the wet cloth wiping thing, you sort of thin the glue, and it runs into the wood, and you can end up with finishing issues later. So that's why I like this method. Just let the glue ooze out, and then shave it off. You kind of want to do it after like a day. This has been a week, so if you wait too long, tight bond turns into, like, iron, and it never wants to come off ever again. Uh, but that, that's a, a nice trick that I learned. I forget where I learned it, but I did not come up with that. And with that done, it's time to break out the sander. Man, is it hard to get something this big framed in a shot and still be able to see it. Anyways, this point on, I'm going to stick these on. So this, these are going to be the shelf support thingies. So you see a lot of bookshelves, they have uh, a couple of fixed shelves, usually bottom, the top's fixed, and one in the middle. That's for stability. All of these are going to be fixed, uh, which means I kind of have to figure out a spacing that allows me to have all the shelves fixed, but also have different size shelves for different size books because some magazines are bigger some specialty books are extra big a lot of books are pretty small though so i'm going to do smaller shelves at the top uh bigger ones at the bottom and i have written down somewhere here we go shelves and how far apart they're going to be now these numbers measure how far apart the same part of different shelves are going to be so this is what a shelf is going to sit on so the top of a shelf support the next one will be 12 and 3 quarter inches up the next one, 12 and 3 quarter inches up, that's the top of the shelf support, so these. Then 12 and 1 quarter, 12, 12, 12, and that'll give me the top of the bookshelf. So I've already laid out those dots from this point. So basically that just means I have to line all these up, glue them square, and I will have a bookshelf. Sort of. So that means two things. Square, spring clamps. I made this bottom one slightly longer for obvious reasons. If it was this short, it wouldn't have anything to support to. It would be all wonky. So if I take this, mark the line, draw it, then I will glue this square against the line, and that will be my shelf support. So cue fast forward, I suppose. And now glue. And y'all laughed at me with all the spring clamps. Well, who's clamping now? Oh no. Thunder outside. On today's episode of Woodworking in a Thunderstorm, I show you why not to grab a giant clamp, walk outside, and stick it up in the sky. 
No, I'm not going to show you why. If you're not smart enough to know why not, then you deserve to be struck by lightning. And trust me, I've been electrocuted enough to know it isn't fun. Just trust me on that. Boom! Clamped! What you don't see is that the way I applied the glue, uh, most of the squeeze out was on the top side. I should probably show you. Squeeze out on the top side is fine because I can trim some of that off and if it's not pretty, uh, the, the shelf is going to sit on top of that so I'm not going to see it. And so the screw up will be hidden. Hooray! Now we let that dry. 